Howdy doody gals and pals, it's me Tiffany. And today, as you can see here, we have a very different kind of episode. So this here is actually where I got inspired to make some artwork for my Iris story. I was watching a TikTok where they were kind of breaking down all of the different um, movie posters that were out there <laughs> and how so much of the Marvel posters and a lot of movie posters have all kind of fallen into the same style of so many people on the image instead of like different artistic rendering. It's all very similar. And I thought, you know what would be fun is if I took my story, my characters, and made up my own movie poster. So as you can see here, that's exactly what I was doing. I, I kind of sketched it all out, plotted it out, and right now I'm trying to work on the background. And oh my word, did this give me an aneurysm. The dimensions for the art piece were much bigger than I was expecting. And so every little bit of what I would try to work on took forever. To render. This is sped up 100% and anytime I would try to make a move it would wait and wait and freeze and move and wait. Oh my love, I swear. I question whether I should just give up on it or not. And the best part about all of this is that I worked so hard to get this gradient background because my knowledge in Photoshop is really low. <laughs> I'm still learning. I didn't realize there were built-in gradients that I could use. So I spent three hours just trying to get this particular color program to come together. Yeah, not my finest moment. <laughs> I had a beast of a time trying to figure out how to do the blending. It, you know, it's all part of a learning process. It's fine. <laughs> but the funniest thing in all of this is that at the end of the day, you barely see any of it whatsoever. <laughs> all of that for nothing. <laughs> oh well. Now this right here is where I'm drawing the character Darren, who is one of the main characters in the book. Um, he plays a big role as kind of the semi-romantic interest for Iris, while also having a lot that goes on in his story. Now. As I'm working on this part here, you can see I'm, I'm trying to get a lot of the shading, trying to figure out how to do the shadows and the lights, and realizing that shadows aren't just a factor of... I don't like to do just like black and white, I like to take the actual color of the skin and work on the lightness and all that kind of shifting. probably my favorite part whenever I do a person's face is to get through to the eyes and getting that light glint off of them. It just automatically to me makes it come alive. This character here, his name is Valamir and he is actually the lord over a town called Sonskirt that's known for being like this big weapons manufacturing thing. Now I could probably go on and talk about all these characters and everything, um, but I just kind of wanted to discuss this process of what all this is. I know it doesn't make sense technically to have a whole poster video on my book that is still not <laughs> published on a YouTube channel that is predominantly for video gaming. What, what is this? Why is this happening? Well, it's all part of the plot and the plan for building up what is called a platform. <laughs> if you guys have been anything around social media, the social media influencers, you know that a lot of what we do is based upon 
numbers and algorithms and the only way you really succeed is by getting followers and whatnot. So you got to figure out things that will let you do that. And it's no different for being an author. If you want to be able to break into the publishing world, you have to have a following before a book has ever made it out. You have to have at least 1,000 newsletter subscribers, uh, what my research tells me. And you need to have people who come to a website, people who follow your Instagram posts and comment and get back and forth and all these things. So, yeah, I... YouTube kind of became one of the platforms that I wanted to use to do that because I also really do enjoy just the basic creation process. Like I love doing things like this. I love doing artwork. I love doing editing. I love doing writing. Just anything that lets me try to build something completely new. Now, I will say in all of this, you'll notice that there's a number of times that I trace stuff, and I will admit straight up, like, yes, like, a lot of the physical forms, they're not straight up just mine. I had to use outlines of body posturing or things. I'm definitely not at a level that I'd like to be. <laughs> and okay, and this one cracked me up right here, using Darcy <laughs> from Pride and Prejudice to do uh, King Zaren from the story. Also a funny thing is realizing that as I'm doing all these drawings, how quickly I forget what my own characters look like in the realization that Zaren doesn't have long hair. Had to, had to take that off. <laughs> and also trying to remember the coloring of everybody else's hair. It's, it's a lot to keep track of. A lot of what we've been doing on this channel has been a place of, like I said, trying to do that platform building, which is why you'll see things like if you look in the Sims section, there's pretty much the entire <laughs> series of the Sims section is one in which it was inspired by taking characters from my story and just kind of plopping them into a world that way. Uh, there's another video that has Google Translate that butchered <laughs> section of my story which was that one's actually was a lot of fun to do you'll have to check that one out and then there's actually the first five chapters we released where i did kind of a dramatized dramatized reading of it and i'm hoping to get even more stuff out in the future in regards to both the Sacred Tears, The Dance of Iris, this, what this story is about, and just other writing projects. I mean, who knows what kind of stuff we can create in the future. Now one thing I do want to address as I go through all of this that you'll notice clearly in a lot of things, uh, my reference, you'll notice clearly a lot of my reference photos I superimpose them onto the image and actually have done straight up tracing of structure of them or the facial features and everything. I will be the first to admit, I don't have the same art skill that many other people do. I, I still kind of, sort of am making my way through Photoshop. I'm not sure how to do a lot of positioning and posturing and there's a part of me that got concerned about doing it this way because I know it can be a touchy subject for people to do tracing people get mad in the art community about it I'm not going to try to say that everything that I've done here is directly just my own there are parts that I've added to it there's parts that I've changed the coloring that's what I'm doing but at the same time, I 
kind of come to a place where I'm not so mad about tracing to figure stuff out because it's actually helping. It's making me shift my thinking and better memorize proportions and distances on things. It's, it's a whole process. <laughs> now this one, oh, I'm here trying to draw Iris running through the actual town of Thronesboro because the, the start of the book starts with an attack on her village. It was, it was interesting trying to figure out how to get her portioned just properly. And I will admit, there's a part of me that looks at her and unintentionally keeps thinking Ariel from Little Mermaid. <laughs> not on purpose but it's I, th I think it's the big hair and the lighter eyes it's just that combo there <laughs> but yeah as I go through and do things like this I would love to hear back from you guys if you want to see more of these kind of things in the future? Um, I also do all of the artwork for the thumbnails for each of our videos. I could show you the process and how I've come up with some of those if you're more interested, if you have any thoughts or questions. If you want to hear more about my story, um, let me know. So, the basic tagline for this book is, how do you stop a living nightmare? You chase after it. And Iris Stratton is a 24-year-old woman who is faced with the devastation of losing everything she loves. The best way I would describe who she is as a character is that she exudes defiant persistence. No matter how impossible the circumstances, no matter how ill-equipped she feels, she's not going to give up. Speaking of not giving up, this right about here almost broke me. I was trying to reposition her face and it all fell apart. So I decided to fix it by bringing in some flower petals from a previous work that I had done under the same thing, same story structure. And then I looked up trying to figure out how to do those, those titles that you would see again, cause it's supposed to be like a movie poster and I'm okay with how those ended, this ended up looking, but I, I feel like it could still, still be better. And Here's what I was able to come together with on this. It took me a total of almost 17 hours to complete. And I gotta say, I'm proud of what I did. It's the biggest art project I've ever undergone. And I kind of look forward to see what else I can do in the future. Thanks so much for watching! If you enjoyed what you saw, please be sure to like this video. And for some more great content, click subscribe. If you guys have any ideas of what games you'd like us to play in the future, leave us a comment below! Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time!